Welcome back, traders and investors, to Benzinga's Pre-Market Prep, brought to you by MarketFi. I'm your co-host, Joel Alconan, along with Brianna Velasky, and we have Serge Berger on the line, head trader and investment strategist at the Strategy Trader. Serge, how you doing this morning? I'm good. Wonderful to be back. How are you? Uh, I'm doing good. So, wow, what? We've had some incredible moves here, had an incredible move in Google on Friday, uh, Apple earnings come up this week, the NASDAQ, the triple Q's on fire here. When you dig down and look at the internals here in this rally, uh, what are you seeing? I'm seeing a market that obviously last week was led by two important parts of the market, the financials, uh, large cap and large cap tech. So, you know, through a lens of price action, we surely have to uh, respect that. And um, you know, I certainly congratulate every, anyone that bought the Nasdaq blindly into the hole the week prior, uh, and then somehow just managed to get long through all these earnings, <laughs> which, from a risk uh, management perspective, I don't think was very sustainable. But regardless, that's well done. Um, you know, looking at things though, like at stocks below, uh, above the 200-day moving average, that's uh, still making uh, lower highs in the S&P 500. Uh, look at the New York Stock Exchange composite, the NYC composite um, index. Uh, just didn't see anywhere near the exuberance we saw last week in the Nasdaq. So market breadth just didn't really support that rally. Okay, and uh, you know, just just go to an individual issue here. So let's say you're a you know a long term holder of of Google, and uh, you know you've sat through the the split and the you know missed seven out of ten quarters. They finally have the beat here, the big run up. I mean, you know, is this something where you know if you've been been in this long term, uh, you know, is it is it time to you know try and protect some profits here? I know it's hard. Everyone has different positions and everything, but uh, looking uh, let's look at the Google how sprinted to a new all time high here. What what would convince you that hey this is this gap and go is just going to continue here? Um, as opposed to giving back some of those uh, profits from Friday. Yeah, no, I, I I actually like Google. I really do. It's just one of the classic cases where you just couldn't you couldn't really catch this move unless you just blindly, uh, you know, uh, blindly w were willing to take a risk. I mean, keep in mind that stock rallied steeply into earnings, and then of course the the massive rally on Friday. So it's not like it just gapped up after earnings. It already gapped higher, like f the four or five uh, tr trading days, or at least had two sizable gap ups before. So I like Google from, and from a long-term perspective. I, I really do. And I do think this breakout was was healthy. The risk is, you know, applying classical or, or technical analysis 101 here that there is at least some sort of mean reversion here uh, where we either see, a, a, you know, a retest of the breakout, which I think would be quite healthy back towards the 600 area or, um, you know, alternatively, and I think this would be just as fine as a, a a correction uh, in time, which is to say the price will just have to work its its overbought levels off by going sideways, you know, and then continue to go higher. So, um, you know, to, to your question, if you're a long-term holder, why not take some profits and see if you can buy or add a little bit lower? I think that would be quite a wise strategy. Serge, you're a veteran of the street here, and uh, I mean, what do you make about that that four day rally from 550 to 600 a header? I mean, especially since the stock has basically gone nowhere for the mm. entire year. Do you think? You know, do you, what do you what do you think about that? I mean, you know, uh, is it you know shorts that are like, okay, I've been holding this short. We didn't crack 500. I don't want to be short into the print. Um, you know, what's your take when you see it? I mean, it's always tempted to fade something like that, but those people that were buying on, you know, the five previous days after six months of inactivity are getting paid. Uh, you know, what's your take mm -hmm. on that? No, absolutely. And, and that's what I'm saying. I think, I think hats off to people that didn't. I, I do think it was an important move. I think that was a really big statement on the part of that stock. No doubt. Uh, my concern is more for right now if you missed that move, as I did, right? and, and it's just because I don't like to gamble for earnings seasons. Correct. Um, because my time horizon isn't five years. It's you know a multiple days to multiple weeks. So I think at this point, if you're not involved or if you are involved and, and, and you, know, you want to lighten up a bit, I think that's, that's probably 
you know, what you want to do. You want to just wait it out a little bit before we get, so we can better price action. But I think through the longer term price action, that statement is very powerful. And I do think a stock will go higher. The question is, do we see 650 or 600 before we see, uh, let's say, 760? You know, I think that's really more my 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 concern right now. Okay, I, I know you're a big uh, follower of the financials here, and we had some good numbers coming out of Morgan Stanley here, getting back to levels not seen since the financial crisis here. Uh, have backed off the pre-market high at 4180. Mm -hmm. The stock hasn't mm -hmm. really spent a lot of time over 40 in the past seven years here. What's your uh, short-term, long-term outlook on Morgan Stanley? Morgan Stanley, just like Bank of America and Citigroup, and and you know, I'm happy to toss in Alamada, J.P. Morgan, and even Goldman. I, you know, I think you got to own these things. I don't necessarily think you have to chase them higher here, just like the Goog and and you know. God forbid Netflix at these levels, but it's if you look at these stocks through the longer term lens, and you can look at Morgan Stanley, you we're we're we have a lot of potential to catch up with the broader market. These stocks have underperformed, and so I I don't necessarily look at Morgan Stanley here in isolation as a stock, but I look at Bank of America, Citigroup. All these stocks have reached really key levels now through a multi-year lens. Like if if you sort of peel back five, six, seven years, they've come to critical areas on eighteen fifty for. For Bank of America, a very important area, and I think these stocks will go higher. So I think you can buy them in a basket uh, through some of the three to six, maybe twelve month lens. In the near term, I just wouldn't chase them. I just don't think it's worth buying something that just gapped up. You know, almost every single day last week. Yeah, boy, you're talking about a level here in Bank America. And uh, coming off, I mean, you had that sprint, you know, the rebound off the lows in 2010. That took you to the 1986 level. Uh, but since 2010, holy mackerel, uh, you made a high the following month. This was in May of 2010 at 1815. You kissed $18, uh, 1803 in March of 2014. Uh, made a little run at it at the beginning of the year. That was short-lived. Uh, actually, in December, you got up to 1821. And now you're right back up here at uh, 1816 close, 1810 high here. I mean, is this? you think this is the time here? It finally uh, holds that $18 level and, you know, makes maybe actually gets to 20 bucks. I'm sure a lot of investors would like to see that. Mm -hmm. I, I I don't know if it's going to hold the 18 area. I still like to buy these things in it. My, my base case for the year remains that we're going to see some sort of better move lower before we go higher. I'm not sure what that's going to be. Maybe it's another freak out over uh, you know the lack of, uh, of, of, of or maybe the potential of an actual you know hike in rates. I, I don't know what it's going to be, but it's just there are too many things out there still in the broader market that that feel like we're going to have one more shakeout and then I would I'd, I'd buy Bank of America I'd, so I have 18 bucks is a little tight I'm talking about 10 cents here <laughs> you know and where the stock closed at 1810 I think or something like that yeah big so. yeah big uh, action a lot of times around the whole number two so we'll definitely yeah. uh, keep an eye on that uh, Apple uh, due to report uh, tomorrow after the close I believe uh, boy mm -hmm. sold off with the market took out some key moving averages uh, nice 10 point rally here uh, it was a little a bit higher in the pre-market uh what's your apple i mean really it's gone nowhere since the last four or five months um any take on apple yeah you know and and i'll give you my take and i'll, I'll toss it back to you then as well kind of see what you're thinking but i look at apple right now and and i've been you know i've been very vocal on this uh both on your show and, and everywhere else around the globe on this um on apple i didn't think there was a real catalyst for a move uh you know, since the uh, the developers conference uh, one and a half, two months ago, something like that, we talked about that with Brianna last Monday, um, and and I said it then, listen, if we don't get a real move, then we're gonna have to wait until earnings. So now I think there's a potential here. The thing I would be more concerned about here is if you look at Apple. So considering the Nasdaq 100 that move last week, and considering Apple's what 14 percent of the Nasdaq 100, uh, you know. Is there potential for Apple to gap up, not quite Google-esque or Netflix-esque last week, but, you know, give us a nice jolt higher and then take the NASDAQ 100 to readings that are just totally bananas, mm -hmm. right, higher. So what do you think? I mean, to me, I look at Apple more as like a play on the NASDAQ 100 and vice versa. 
I just I mean? look. I look at that move on Google on Friday on a thirty cent beat, and uh, you know if Apple comes out with any kind of good number here, uh, last time it uh, last earnings beat it opened up at its high, and you know pulled back it did nothing. I mean, you know mm-hmm. a lot of people may be looking for the same thing, you know at you know repeat of last time, but it's just been you know too quiet for too long with a uh, mm-hmm. you know with a not necessarily a price uh, correction, but a time correction yep. so uh you know one i believe it got up to one i'm not sure what the all-time high is here in apple uh 135 i believe let's see mm-hmm. yeah on earnings day it got to 134.54 i know it traded higher in the pre-market here so boy if anything i'd like to see a little bit of a pullback i learned my lesson last time i had bought some of the weekly puts the day before the earnings and uh Boy, if I could have been a little bit more patient, bottom the day of her, you know, the after the release, uh, I would have paid a little bit. But uh, just too mm-hmm. long. It's been uh, too quiet here. Um, also, I mean, uh, you know, Apple's not the only uh, a company reporting on Tuesday. Uh, Microsoft, and I've been looking yep. at this chart for a long time here, and uh, it's made a round trip here. Uh, it had the earnings uh, beat last quarter, gapped up all the way, got near that $50 level and then came back down and filled the gap uh, from the earnings. I think it made it by like 15 or 20 cents. Uh, Now rallying back up here. It looks like you're running into a little resistance here in Microsoft. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's kind of a laggard as far as all-time highs go compared to the market. I see multiple highs here, 4670, 4680. Got up to that area the last couple days too here. Uh, What's your take on Microsoft? No, I, look, I, I see what you're seeing. I think Microsoft is still very constructive. I'm still very, you know, very much bullish on on some of the old, quote unquote, tech guys like you know even Hewlett Packard and those guys. I'll toss them in there. What I'll what keep in mind though is you know so we have sort of a one two punch. We have Apple 14 percent on Nasdaq 100. Again, keep in mind last week's crazy move in the Nasdaq 100. Microsoft, I believe it's the second or third largest stock in the Nasdaq 100. So. Things are going to get very interesting here. I mean, you know, if we get another pop in those two stocks and then in the Nasdaq 100, you know, I'm going to be taught, you know, just reeling in the shorts like crazy, like tossing out short positions. I mean, um, you know, to profit on for, for a meaner version, move lower. Um, you know, so I think I think that's probably for me the focus and the trade of this week, if you want to talk more near term, because I just think that move last week was a little nutty. Without uh, filling at least one gap or something. Um, you know, also, I mean, you know, we could talk about all these, you know, high flying stocks, but uh, you know, there's still stocks that uh, provide a good, a good yield. One of those stocks is Verizon here. Uh, AT and T. I don't know what got into Wall Street. Uh, this was back over the last month. Uh, I gave all those upgrades and everything. Uh, plus, it was going ex dividend. Pushed it back over thirty six dollars, and now came back to 34.50 but uh this verizon really never caught a bid here uh nice yeah i mean it's just something you just like that you know put in like your just your long-term portfolio forget about it get paid the yield and then re- you know maybe reinvest the dividends or take the dividends to take out and put out in other stocks here uh what's your take on verizon i think i think you could probably consider doing that my problem with with some of these big communication stocks is always just there always seems to be either a litigation issue out there or um, or more something in the sense where there there's some merger or acquisition in the in the pipeline, especially for like the Verizon and these guys. And just and I'm just honestly, I'm just a little bit skeptical on those stocks in terms of I just continue to feel they're just gonna lag behind the curve on all the technology out there, you know. Reliance on cable and cell phones, and I don't know. I just, I'm just concerned about that movement for these stocks. You know, uh, so that's why I'm much more would rather be in a Google or, you know, I don't know. I don't want to necessarily toss Facebook in there, but you know, that's that's kind of my bigger issue, bigger bigger concern. And yes, I hear the 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 dividend for sure, but you know, the dividend it's like. Um, it's like the payoff diagram of a naked put, right? Right, right. So, right. You know, people and people forget that. You know, it's a nice Wall Street strategy. Broker tells you, you know, buy dividend stocks. Great. Look at the payoff diagram, guys. <laughs> you know. 
Okay. Uh, finally here, uh, let's take a look at IBM. Uh, Fed, uh, you know, a nice run up here against earnings. You said you mentioned that you like some of the old tech. Uh, does IBM fall into that category? Absolutely. I mean, IBM more or less has the same chart as Microsoft. I think you, you could overlay those two and um, you could pretty much confuse the two stocks as far as I'm concerned. Yes, I like it. Um, I don't necessarily think it's going to go ballistic. I don't think any of these stocks can, but I think it's a it's it's a sustainable a sustainable move in what the stock has done. You know, really nice bottoming formations here late fourteen early this year. You know, it's hard now to respect that, and and if, if for nothing else, then maybe just the large large cap tech movement that we've seen. You know, from a momentum perspective, should be able to to, to give the, give the something like an IBM further room to, to move higher. We've been on the line with Serge Berger. He's head trader and investment strategist at The Steady Trader. Serge, thanks a lot for your input, and uh, we'll talk to you again soon. Thanks, Joel. Have a good week. Okay, you too.